Okay, good luck. We're just coming now from Shabbos Chazak. Chazak. Chazak, when it's Chazik, we, we bless each other to be strong and to be, and to be strengthened. So I want to share a few stories about um, this theme. Being strong doesn't mean that you that you discover something you didn't know before. In Tanya, there's one word that's there more than any other word, and that's the word mamish. Mamish means that it's real. A lot of things that we know, but being strong means that you are that you are in touch with the reality of of the uh, the truth of what you, of what you're doing. Like this week's Torah portion, we reach, where we read about Yaakov's life. The Torah says that as Jacob's children are alive, so was Jacob alive. So the power of Jacob being alive eternally is through all of us being alive. But there's also a deeper meaning to the idea of Jacob being alive to his children. Every Jew is called Jacob. And our children being alive means that our actions have to be alive. The things we do to put our life into it. I'll never forget when I was a child growing up in Massachusetts, so we did scavenger hunts. We would go to the mall, and our counselors would bring us to the mall. We would have to, to find someone who was going to give us a green sock, who was do something else, something crazy. But when I was a student in Yeshiva in 770, the Camp Laman Achai came by for a scavenger hunt, and they had to find out something else. They had to find out what is a chaser. I'll never forget this, how one 10-year-old boy went over to the legendary Mashpia Rav Kuti Feldman, and he said to Rav Kuti, what is a chaser? Rav Kuti stood up, and he said, a chaser is someone who puts all the fire of his heart in everything that he does. That's the meaning of Vayechi Yaakov, that not just Yaakov is alive, his offspring is alive. So to each of us is called Yaakov. The word Yaakov has two parts, Yud, which is the first letter of God's name, and Ekev, which means heal. So the idea of a Jew is that he takes his, his godliness, his holiness, and it, he imbues that in the earthiest and the lowest kinds of things. He puts his own neshama in everything that he does. So on that note, I'm going to share with you a few stories where you can see how, although it doesn't seem to uh, be something that's um, so godly, so holy, and yet there's a connection there. So story number one, uh, I think this story happened in the Empire State Building. I read this in the Hair the Magazine. It doesn't say which building it was in. But I remember visiting the Empire State Building when I was studying in Yeshiva. And so that was where my uh, Friday Miftsayim route, that's where I would go every Friday to put on film with people. And uh, this, um, this boy named Simcha Wernick, he would go to the Empire State Building as well, and he would go to the 23rd floor. And the 23rd floor is a floor which has just one company. Each floor the Empire State Building is, has many, many businesses. And... Uh, and this floor covers, um, this floor, the 23rd floor, if I remember correctly, it's, Empire, it's, it's just one company. Instead of it being like 100 companies in, in most floors in the Empire State Building, this is just one company. So he would go to this, this business, and he never got past the secretary. He would bring the secretary every week, the weekly Chabad publication. He would ask her to give this out to the Jewish employees, put it out in the, in the coffee area, and he would do this every single week. And, uh, you know, it wasn't like an easy thing to do. You're going there every week and you're, you're paying for it. You're buying these publications for however much it costs and you're spending time and you're going there as opposed to going somewhere else. And he went there every single week and he never got past the secretary. One week, he's on the, he's on the elevator and he meets a man there named Shlomo. And Shlomo says, oh, I say, he does his, does his elevator pitch. You want to put on tefillin? Can we talk a little about Torah? Da, 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 da. I'm starting in yeshiva. Whatever his elevator pitch was. And this boy and this man says to him, wow, I'm so interested in, in Judaism. I'm so happy to meet you. Come into my office. And he gets his number. And this man works on the 23rd floor. So finally, 
he gets past the secretary. He's able to go and see all the many, many Jews, more than 20 Jews worked on this floor. They're able to visit them every week for Passover, for Purim, for Hanukkah, and to inspire everyone who worked in this, in this company. And this guy, Shlomo, came closer and closer to Judaism, and we learned with him. And one day, Shlomo told him, Rosie, Here, Rosie, pass, pass to me. One day Shlomo, one day Shlomo uh, tells him, you know, it's so interesting, the day that I met you was the day that I decided, that I visited the Rebbe's Ohel. I went to the Rebbe's Ohel, and I asked the Rebbe for a blessing to be closer to, to Judaism. I asked him, I heard about the Rebbe, and I wasn't that religious, but I wanted to do, like, spark something. And right after I visited the Rebbe, I came back to, the, to my office on 23rd floor. Who did I meet in the elevator? I met you. So Simcha Wernick was, 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 was flabbergasted. Here this man asked the Rebbe for a blessing, he wanted to be closer to Judaism, and the Rebbe sent him, Simcha Wernick. And he met this guy in the elevator. He felt this was the Rebbe's blessing being fulfilled. Oh, sorry about that. He felt... <laughs> He felt that this is the Rebbe's blessing being fulfilled, that he is, uh, that, that's how he met this guy in, in the elevator, because the Rebbe wanted this guy to be closer to Judaism, and that's how he, um, he, he, he got in touch with him. As soon as the Rebbe gave the, he went to the Ohel, right away he met, he met this boy, and that started a whole domino effect on so many other Jews that were, that were affected by this. There was um, a custom in time of the Alter Rebbe, story number two, time of the Alter Rebbe, now, the Rebbe would send out an emissary to visit various towns to collect staka for Talb Jews in Israel. The Kol Chabad is the oldest uh, charity in Israel. It started in time of the Rebbe to support Remendel Vitev, Skerada Tzadikim, who had moved from Russia to Israel to support them and to help them. So the Alter Rebbe would send out emissaries and they would go and they would collect staka for for the, these Hasid and Tzedek. The, the previous Rebbe said the following story. He said, you should know this story is a story you have to learn. Just like you have to study Hasidus, you have to study this story. The story is a very deep story, a very meaningful story. You have to study this story. So I'll, hopefully I'll convey the story correctly, but either way, you're not gonna, we're not going to do the story justice because it's a story that has to be studied. The Alter Rebbe sent an emissary to go to collect charity from two Hasidim. Both of the Hasidim were well-to-do. Both of them were uh, very devoted to their learning and their praying. And they were both very generous people. But there was a difference between them. One of them was Mamala Lamata, and one of them was Mamata Lamayla. Rose, you know what that is? Mamala Lamata means one of them had to understand things first, had to make sense things, had to make sense to them first. And all the things made sense to him then he would go and, and uh, do things that made sense to him. And the other one was Mamatulamaila. He first obeyed whatever it was that had to get done. And only then we tried to like fully internalize what he was doing. But he first, he went, he put his Nasev and Ishma. First we do, then we understand. That's what was the attitude of the second Chassid. So when this emissary of the Alter Rebbe came to these two Chassid who lived in the same street, and he asked them for charity, for, for the Jews in Eretz Yisrael. So the first chassid, let's call him Reuben. Reuben was the one who was, everything's first, whatever, below to above. Just go beyond your logic. Just do it. First we'll do, then we'll understand. That chassid said, well, how much did the Alter Rebbe ask for? He said the Alter Rebbe didn't give a number. So he took all the money that he had, he gave it to this emissary, and he said, please give this to the Alter Rebbe. But he was thinking, it may not be enough. Maybe the Alter Rebbe wants him to give more money. So right away he prepared to travel to the Alter Rebbe in order to find out what exactly the Alter Rebbe wanted him to do. So he had all the money he had and then he traveled to the Alter Rebbe. That was the first chassid. The second chassid, the one who was Mamal Lamata, who first had to think things through and only then did he do them. So he went to the second chassid and he told the second chassid that the Alter Rebbe had asked for charity for the land of Israel. Second Chassid said, how much did he ask for? 
He said, didn't say a number. So this chassid, he said, okay, let me, let, me, let me think about this. And he decided he's going to have to travel to the Alter Rebbe to find out what this means. But he's not going to travel right away. He's going to wake next morning, and he's going to pray, and he's going to, when he finishes everything that he does in, in the regular order of the day, at 12, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, he set out to visit the Alter Rebbe. Meanwhile, the, the first chassid, came to the Alter Rebbe, the one who was the one who first did before trying to understand. He came, comes to the Alter Rebbe, and he asked, and he tells the Alter Rebbe, he asked the Alter Rebbe if what he had given is sufficient. The Alter Rebbe told him he should immediately go and he should move from where he lives and bring everything he has and, and, and he, should, he should immediately move, immediately move from where he was before. Immediately move, move, move from his house. Okay. So this chassid immediately does that. He goes home and he gathers his family. He didn't daven yet, he didn't pray in the morning yet. But he, the first thing he does, tries to sell whatever he can and move out and to go, and he brings his whole family to Yajna and he settles them in some kretschman, some inn over there, and then he goes to pray. That was the first chassid. Meanwhile, the messenger of the al Rebbe came back to the al Rebbe and he, he carried the, he told the al Rebbe about the donation of the first chassid, the Alter Rebbe said, what about the second chassid? The one who does things first, he has to first understand things, then he does them. The one who is mamala mata, nishma manasa, first understands. So the, Alter, so the messenger said, what he had told him. He told him he's, gonna, he's going to come here and he's going to find out. So the Alter Rebbe said, the Alter thought about this, he put, and the Alter Rebbe said, but will it be before the occurrence or after the occurrence? He said he's going to come here and bring Stuck on to find out what he has to do. But will it be before or will it be after? What happened was a fire broke out on that street. The fire burned the home of both of these chassidim. And the second chassid, he, he had to leave his home in the middle of his praying and he lost everything. The first chassid, who had left when Altabah told him, he managed to, Baruch Hashem, not just to, to, um, uh, rescue um, his family. Both Baruch both, Hashem, both Chassidim um, survived. But the first Chassid who went who went Lomato Lomayla, who just went first to the action before understanding, he was blessed to Baruch Hashem to, to have all of his possessions as well. So the point of the story is that Chazak, Chazak, be strong. Being strong means the things that you know, but you don't necessarily put you're fire into what you're doing. You know, you know that this is the right thing to do, but you have to first analyze it, you first have to make sense to you, or do you go with the full force, the full fire? So this, the first chassid was lomat lomayla. He didn't first rationalize things and then try to figure things out. He went lomat lomayla. What has to get done? He went with a full strength. That's what we see from this second story. Third story, second story is a story that the previous ever shared. This following story is a story that Reb Shema Zalman Hecht, uh, all the Shalom shares. Um, I don't know this, his source for the story, but this is the way he shared the story. He said that Ramelech of the the famous tzaddik, the author of the Neim Ali Melech, who was a student of the Mzitcha Maggid, he would travel around dressed like a simple villager, and people wouldn't know who he was really a great, great tzaddik. He once visited this town, and the custom in this town was, whenever they had a visiting um, rabbi, so everyone would come to the, the, the main shul, and they would hear the visiting rabbi give his sermon. And it was very exciting for the people in the town, because it wasn't like today, you have internet or newspapers. When a visiting scholar would come, he would also tell them things that happened in other cities, and it was just interesting. So the whole town would gather when a new um, scholar would come and they would give the visiting rabbi eight golden, eight golden coins, eight golden, uh, golden, whatever it's called, the currency in that, in that city. So this Ramel Chodeshensk visits the city and he speaks to the Parnas HaChodesh. The Parnas HaChodesh is the man who was responsible for the money of the community and he was the one who would pay the visiting rabbis. Ramel didn't look like any special visiting rabbi. He looked like a regular guy. He looked like a simple villager. So when he told the Paras the president of the community that he wants to share something, 
He didn't look at him as a candidate to say anything. Look, this guy doesn't know how to say anything. Just a little. He's, he's, he's not a. He's not a guy who could who could share anything. But he had a son whose name was Avner. The Paras Achayish present community had a son named Avner. So when Melech kept on asking, "Please give me a chance. I have something I want to share. Please let me share what I, to, what I want to share." And the present community said, "No, I can't do this. I mean, I don't know who you are." And he kept on asking him and asking him. And the present community was about to like throw him out. But his son, Avner, said to his father, Dad, he's a Jew. He says he wants to share something. He probably has something good to share. Why not give him a chance? So his son was a very good and wise and kind son. And his father really um, had a lot of respect for his son. Okay, my son, I'll do it. And, he, and the way it worked was the president of the community would give a note to the visiting rabbi. And the, and the uh, rabbi would bring the note to the shamish. He would bring him to the, the beetle, the gabai of the synagogue. And he would make an announcement and tell everyone, come, there's someone going to give this the sermon. And that's how they made the announcement. And everyone came, men and women, and everyone comes to hear. The visiting rabbi is here. There's someone coming from out of town. He's visiting. Wow, it's a little shtetl, the little town. This is big news. Everyone's coming to the, town, to the, to the synagogue to hear the visiting rabbi. Ramelech comes on the bima, and everyone wants to hear what he has to say. Everyone's excited. He doesn't say, does not say anything. Everyone's waiting for him to say something. And instead of him saying anything, they could see he's looking around. What is he looking for? He's looking around. And people are getting nervous. Like, what's this guy doing? They started getting agitated. Some people were openly agitated, and they're like, Come on, you you have something to say or don't, you don't have anything to say. Other people a little more peaceful, they said, are you looking for someone? Everyone, everyone in town is here. I mean, who are you looking for? So Ramelech says, I sense in this town that there's something, there's someone not doing, that there's something here that is, um, not, I don't know, the, 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 the words he used were glass and things which are not, not kosher. There's something not kosher going on over here. <laughs> and now the, the, the people who are a little more agitated are getting very agitated. He got the whole town to come to this synagogue and he's not even saying anything. He's insulting them, telling them that there's something in this town which isn't, which isn't appropriate. And they started to run after him and they wanted to hit him. So he runs out of the synagogue. But these people weren't, weren't uh, uh, they didn't give up. They ran after him and the synagogue, and many, and everyone ran with them. They all ran out of the synagogue after Remelech. Remelech runs away from the synagogue. He runs down down a street, and he runs a few blocks away. They're in, they're in hot pursuit. He runs into an alley, another room, another alley, and he and he manages to to find an open door. He runs in the door, and in this room where he we came in, there was someone who was doing something wrong, a very important member of the community doing something wrong. And he didn't say exactly what was going on. It was something that obviously was uh, inappropriate. So the other people walking, running after him, they said, oh my gosh, what is this guy doing? And that's how he escaped from them because they they uh, were all busy taking care of this, 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 this uh, unfortunate misbehavior that they discovered. And meanwhile, Ramela kept on running. He didn't know that they were all staying in that room. He didn't know this was the thing that he sensed with divine inspiration. He knew there was something wrong in the city. He didn't know this was what it was, and the people were... But he kept on running. He's running, and he, he loses his, his breath. He's so tired. And running after him was Afner, the son of the president of the community. And the Afner says to, to Ramelech, Rebbe, please wait. And Ramelech, he is, why should, what's going on? But Ramel couldn't run anymore. He was so tired from running. And he stopped. And he sat down. And the boy also runs to Ramel and he also was out of breath. And they both sit down until he caught, caught their breath. Finally, the, Rab Abner, uh, this boy Abner tells Ramel, I ran after you because I wanted to give you the eight golden coins that you're supposed to get as a speaker. It wasn't your fault that they ran after you. You still deserve the eight golden coins. I want to give you the eight golden coins. 
So Ramelech said, "Well, why? These are not your. It's not your money. It's not your decision. It's your father's decision. You can't take away money from your father and give them to me if if, if your father doesn't agree." So Ramelech, so the boy says, "No, no, no. My father gives me every day three groshim, three pennies, and I just now finally got all together. I have eight golden coins from all the pennies he gave me for a few years." I finally have eight golden coins, and I want to give them to you. So the Melech said to the boy Avner, he said, what can I do to bless you? What kind of blessing would you want? So the boy says, listen, I'm just giving you what you deserve, and I don't, des- I don't deserve any special blessing, because this is what you deserve. So whatever you want to give me a blessing, I'll accept. So the Melech put his hands on this boy's head, and he said to him, may we one day become mechutanim. Mechutanim means that they should one day um, become related through marriage. Sure enough, many, many years later, this boy grew up to be a grandfather, and one of his descendants, one of his grandchildren, one of his, his son's sons, married into a family of Sadikim, of Ramelech's grand, grandchildren. And at the wedding, there were 70 Sadikim who visited, who, who were at this wedding. It was a huge wedding. One of the tzaddikim at the wedding, he said to this, this, this Avner, he said, what did you do in your life that you merited that you would be able to marry one of your children with Ramelech's grandson? How did you merit that you, one of your grandchildren should marry Ramelech? How could you become a mechut in Ramelech? He says, well, I give Tzaka, I learn Torah. He says, no, no, no. You must have done something. Maybe there's something when you were younger to merit this. He didn't realize that this was, that the person he met when he was a child was Ramelech. So after they had a discussion, the guy told him, the one, the, the person that you would help that day was none other than, he described him to him, that, that was the Melech of, of Lezhensk. So this, uh, this week, which is coming from Shabbos Chazak, uh, is very connected to the message of these stories. First of all, you see from the story that just because people are being mean to someone doesn't mean that you should join in. Join in. And number two, that the, there's a lot of blessing in being the person who, who pays attention to someone who everyone else is ignoring. And, as it, and the, the blessing comes back to you. You give strength to another person, the blessing always comes back. I told you, I'll tell you three stories, I'll tell you one more on that note. Rabbi Weinberg, al Bashalom, he would give a radio class every Bati Shabbos, every Saturday night, on the Tanya. And he one time gave the Rebbe a, a few papers that he wanted the Rebbe to edit. That he had, in order to prepare his class, he uh, wrote on these papers and he wanted the Rebbe to edit them. And he put the papers in the Rebbe's door and he was hoping that the Rebbe's secretary would see the papers. And when, the Rebbe, when he would come out of the Rebbe's door, he'd come out of the Rebbe's room, he would give them to the Rebbe. But instead what happened is, when you opened the door, the papers fell. And the Rebbe himself saw the papers on the floor. The Rebbe picked them up. In general, the Rebbe would always pick up anything that, any Shemus, any, any, any paper of Torah, that would stop and pick it up. You could see, I, I saw myself when I was a child. Anyways, but Rabbi Weinberg felt very bad because he made the Rebbe pick up the papers that because of him, the papers fell on the floor. And because of him, the Rebbe had to bend down. So he wrote the Rebbe a note, and in his note, he said, I apologize for making the Rebbe bend down and lift up the papers. The Rebbe underlined the word to lift up. The Rebbe said, to lift up is my whole essence. That's my whole life is about lifting up. Especially where other people overlook. Lagbia, to lift up, that's my, my whole life is about, that's what my whole life is about lifting up. Especially where others overlook. So that's the idea of chazak, chazak, and chazak, not just being strong ourselves, not just like in the first story, um, to realize the uh, power of the mission that we're given, not just like in the second story, where we... Um, to go beyond, not to go to intellectualize things, but to go beyond limitations and go beyond our logic and to follow what Hashem wants us to do. But also, we see in the third story and things that other people overlook, other people don't pay attention to. Benes chazik to give strength to others. So Hashem should bless us all. Should chazak chazak benes chazik. We should be strengthened, and we should see the Ola uh, peretz We should see the strength and the glory of Hashem with the coming of Mashiach, when Hashem will break through the boundaries of Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim's Holiness will spread throughout all of Israel, 
and in Israel's holiness will spread throughout the holy world to the whole world. Bukara Mamish Kang Mashiach. A good